good morning students today we will be starting with a new chapter that is the chapter third of your science book the chapter name is fiber to fabric now before starting off with this chapter we should be we should be knowing we should be kind of familiar with few of the topics like uh, do you know which part of the sheep's body yields fibers are you aware of how these fibers are converted into woolen yarn that we buy from market to knit sweaters do you have any idea of how silk fibers are made into silk which is woven into sarees these are the some basic questions that you will be able to answer after completion of this chapter now let's start this chapter the first slide is about introduction wool comes from sheep here there are some uh, wool yielding animals in the picture that is shown in front of you it comes from sheep goat yak and some other animals these wool yielding animals bear hairs on their body do you know why these animals have a thick coat of hair hair traps a lot of air now this air is a very poor conductor of heat as you as you would learn in the further chapters also so what happens here is the hair keeps these animals warm wool is derived from these hairy fibers so in the picture shown in front of you these four pictures these are the animals which yield fibers which we yield wool from okay next now animal that yields wool several breeds of sheep are found in different parts of our country however the fleece of the sheep is not the only source of wool though wool commonly available in the market is sheep wool the common availability of a wool which is present in the market is the sheep wool yak wool is common in tibet and ladakh the picture that is shown in front of you you can see the yak that the wool of yak is common in tibet and ladakh angora wool is obtained from angora goats these are the different kinds of goats and they are uh, used for obtaining the wools which are these are generally found in hilly regions such as jammu and kashmir now wool is also obtained from goat hairs the under fur of kashmiri goat is soft it is woven into fine shawls and pashmina shawls the fur on the body of camel is also used as wool llama and alpaca found in south america also yields wool now we are aware that wool is obtained from some diff different different kinds of animals now how this wool is made into fibers this wool is obtained but there are certain steps which is taken which is taking place before we get that into fibers which before we wear those clothes made out of wool so there are several steps for obtaining wool sheep are reared their hair is cut and processed into wool rearing and breeding of a sheep if you will travel in hills of jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh uttaranchal arunachal pradesh and sikkim or plains of haryana punjab or rajasthan and gujarat you can see that the shepherds taking their herds to of, of sheep gra for grazing sheep are herbivores and prefer grass and leaves apart from grazing sheep rearers also feed them on a mixture of pulses cone jowar oil oil cakes and minerals in winter sheep are kept in those and fed on leaves grains and dry fodder so the very first step which involves is the fleece of the sheep along which with a thin layer of skin is removed from its body this process is called shearing now shearing is the process where a machine is used to remove that all the wools all the wool that is present on the body of the animal it the most commonly that we wear is a sheep's wool so here in the picture it is the in front of you it is shown that the sheep wool is been uh, derived from with the help of a machine this process is known as shearing there are several different processes in this slide you can see that there are several different processes which are taking place the first is where the sheep is being sheared and the next process is the next three processes we will discuss it in detail now next this is the step 2 the sheared skin with hair is thoroughly washed into tanks to remove grease dust and dirt this is called scoring nowadays scoring is done by machines 
Now what happens is that the wool which is derived from the animal is, is kind of dirty at the beginning. So we have to wash it. We have to get rid of all the dust, the dirt and the grease which is present on the wool. So the removing of these impurities, these dust particles from the boil, from the boil, from the wool generally is this process is known as scoring. First, the scoring is done into tanks. These tanks is the way in which these grease and dust particles are removed. Then, the next is uh, this. In this, the scoring is done by machine. Here also, the removal of dust and grease particles are uh, taking place. But instead of tanks, it is done by machines, which is even more effective on removing these dust particles. The next process after scoring, sorting is done out. The hairy skin is sent to a factory where hair of different textures are separated and sorted. The small fluffy fibers called burrs are picked, up, picked out from the hair. These are the same burrs which sometimes appear on your sweaters. You, in your sweaters you can generally see that there are small fine like fine hairs which are present on your woolens. So that is known as burrs. The fibers are scored again and dried. They are again dried and scored. This is the wool ready to be drawn into fibers. Now here the picture in front of you is showing that the fibers can be dyed into various colors as the natural fleece of the sheep and goats is black, brown and white. The natural color of the fiber is three colors that is black, brown and white. The other colors of woolen that we wear is generally dyed with different different colors. The fibers are then straightened and combined into combined and rolled into yarn. The longer fibers are made into wool for sweaters and the shorter fibers are spun or woven into woolen cloth. Now here in this process you can see that the rolls of yarn are take is, is in the process of making. Next topic, now we have learnt about wool, how it is derived, how we wear it, how, what all the processes are involved before we wear it into onto ourselves. Next is the silk. How is silk made now silk fibers are also animal fibers silk worms spin their silk fibers the rearing of silk worms for obtaining silk is called sericulture the process by which we rear those silk worms for obtaining the silk is known as sericulture before we discuss the process of obtaining silk, it is necessary to know the interesting life history of the silk moth now before we proceed on to how the silk is formed we should be aware of the life process the life history of the silk moth Okay, this is the life history of the silk moth present in front of you. In the first picture, you can see that there are eggs. This is the picture where you can see the eggs of the worm. The female silk moth lays eggs from which hatch her larvae, which are called caterpillars or silk worm. From these eggs, there are caterpillars which hatch from. Now, they grow into size and when the, cap when the caterpillar is ready to enter the next stage of its life history called pupa, Next is a pupa, an early cocoon. It first weaves a net to hold itself. Then it swings its head from side to side in the form of figure of eight. Now, in this picture, in this video, you can see that this caterpillar is upside down hanging. And it rolls itself into a figure of eight and forms a cocoon, which gives us this shape. Now, the next is, during these movements of the head, the caterpillar secretes fibers made of a protein which hardens on exposure to air and becomes silk fiber. Now, during this process, where it is forming a cocoon, it hardens in the presence of air and it forms a, this cocoon. Soon, the caterpillar completely covers itself by the silk fiber. This covering is, all, is known as cocoon. This covering is known as an cocoon. This is an early cocoon and this is the late cocoon when the whole process has been taken place completely. The further development of the moth continues inside the cocoon. Silk fibers are used for weaving silk cloth. The silk yarn is obtained from a cocoon of the silk moth. There is a variety of silk moths which look very different from one another in the silk yarn. The yield is different in textures. Thus, the sar silk, moga silk, kosa silk, etc. are obtained from cocoons spun by different types of moths. The most common silk moth is the mulberry silk moth. Now, mulberry is a kind of a leaf. Here, you can see that this silk worm is feeding onto mulberry leaves. This is the way, this is the life cycle in short that I've told you about silk moth. The last topic of this chapter involves rearing of silkworms. A female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time. 
the eggs are sorted stored carefully on stripes of cloth or paper and sold to silkworm farmers okay these farmers keep eggs under hygienic conditions in under suitable conditions of temperature and humidity now rearing of silk a pile of cocoons is used for obtaining silk fibers the cocoons are kept under the sun or boiled or exposed to steam the fibers separate out the process of taking out the thread from the cocoon for use as silk is called reeling the silk reeling is done in special machines which unwind the threads of fibers of silk from the cocoon silk fibers are then spun into silk threads which are woven into silk by cloth weavers now this was the rearing of silkworms now rearing of silkworm takes place on a very large scale where there are thousands and lakhs of uh, silk worms are reared okay and from there the silk is stored into various different places under certain pressure humidity and everything now this was the last child last topic and it has been completed now uh, uh, you can find the assignment a worksheet attached with this uh, chapter and uh, submit the worksheet by tomorrow thank you very much students